Je suis dit, comme ça. What what is the main topic today? Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, to everybody. So, uh, today they've told me the topic is uh, bodhicitta and on mind training. So, Yes. So uh, uh, most of your, of you all probably know me, but I don't know many of you all. Yes. So I would like to offer once again my greetings. So I'm extremely happy that you have come here to a very uh, precious monastery like Kopan to encounter a very precious Dharma. So I'm very happy that you have had this opportunity. So the, the topic today is about loving kindness, compassion. So in, in accordance with the Dharma, what is most important is our motivation, our intention. So what our natural intention or motivation is, you know, wishing for happiness, not wanting suffering, these types of uh, feelings are natural. So, uh, whether it is uh, feelings of happiness or feelings of suffering, all of this is dependent upon causes and conditions. To have happiness, you need causes and conditions for it. And, to, uh, and for sufferings to happen, it, it is conditioned by uh, causes and conditions. So whether um whether it is generating a motivation for our spiritual practice, Dharma practice, or whether it is uh, generating our mo- a mo- a motivation uh, for our life, what if, um, if you set forth the proper motivation, then you sort of ensure the feelings of happiness. <laughs> So and 
so on. For this short period that we have at hand, then it is good to generate the, the most expansive altruistic motivation, uh, you know, uh, not just for oneself, but for all sentient beings, in all, uh, you know, with it, for all sentient beings, uh, for all sentient beings, um, unbiased by thoughts of, you know, what spiritual, uh, by, by religion, by, you know, uh, nationality, you know, undifferent, you know, unbiased by such restrictions, but for the benefit of all sentient beings in order to secure uh, their happiness and to free them from suffering. For that purpose, then, one is go uh, going to, you know, Uh, generate the motivation for undertaking this. Then, Kapsa Fabi, Ta Semji, Cheva Tsam Mahimba, Semba Chachembo, Cheva Tsam Mahimba Tini, Chamdro Ta Semji, Tizimba Tsi. Then, Kuguyure, Tainzani, Sanji Chosumla, Ngatsu Tsarsum Dengo. So, so at this point, in conjunction with generating this this altruistic aspiration, this great noble thought, uh, seeking the benefit of all mother sentient beings, uh, and country times. So, <clears throat> so uh, as a Buddhist, then you take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. So if you're not particularly a Buddhist, then whatever uh, spiritual path you take refuge in, then you re recall those objects of refuge. In your mind, and when we take refuge in, in the context of refuge, there you have definitive forms of refuge, and also you have interpretive forms of refuge. Then in that, just draw like the young, ah, not so. Some way I was don't go at it. So when we take refuge, also we need to think, um, how uh, how is it that we take refuge? Not so same day. Then it. That's sim that's trouble, because our mind minds are so hardened. Chesa ani da kunju sum se la ani sanje chusama duong du ani du ba ina su dor du na ani ngaso tawa chinji malowa chuba chinji malowa la thene chasu dogi la guere na ji chaguere so. Although we take, re, uh, uh, take refuge in the Badama and Sangha, the rare sublime three, but the actual um, refuge that we take, if you see, if you put it very, uh, you know, concise in a in a very conduce, uh, condensed form, then we actually take refuge in the unmistaken view and unmistaken conduct. So these are the the actual refuge. The unmistaken view, unmistaken conduct. Chesanda, ah, kunjo sum, ladu, tari, tamay chingu, jere, tangi yang jar, dur du zamzi, kashi saba kashi, yuna, dur dun zazi lavala, ani, sanji kunjo sena, chu, dumba po tere, ani, chu kunjo sena, tangi maso, chap mumadi, chu kunjo chagu re, ani, kindu kunjo sena, so uh, most of y'all probably know what uh, what the refuge in the rare sublime three are about. But to uh, just to uh, you know recap briefly, then uh, the Buddha is the founder, the teacher of that refuge, and the Dharma, the teachings, that is the actual refuge, and the Sangha, the spiritual community, that is the support that helps us to. Actualize the actual refuge. Tesunza, 
ペレラジタナツシクイナンバチソニャズヘロワアニアンタツソサンジニラユンデチャンジュギセムラヤデペカズウルタチャンジュギセムラヤディアンペアチェチェマインバチメベチャンジュギセムトニタワデンレギトク
とそまいなでね。ああ、ゲンデュクンジョース。あんてんでせぐえれ。たちくんざんじ。ゲンデュクンジョちゃうよまれ。あねじ、どんば。ああ、よんすつおば。じゅうね。あねげつのいどんばちゃんのまじゅうね。あねゲンデュクンジョーちゃんぼ。ラマちゃちゃんぼぎ。あねじら。ジュバパルマチーはセイニャタ、デンデーギザチンボトテアギ、ギンデュジラジラ、ギンデュギンジョウ、ツングユレ、アンデュシ、アイナヤン、ウスギンデュギンジョウ、ウスジェワラ、マツオポモスルジーナ、トニーウスン、チェンジュスンビツジンビトニー、ポンバニーウスン、カドゥ、ドスワイナティ、ギンデュギンジョウス。So when we talk about the Dharma refuge, Uh, I mean, the Sangha refuge, the Sangha refuge. The actual sang- Sangha refuge,、um, th- w- what, um, what that Sangha entails is someone who has generated the view of emptiness sustained by the thought of bodhicitta, the direct re- realization, having that direct realization of emptiness, having that direct. So,、uh, anyone who has that. Realization within the mind, that is,、uh, is the Sangha object of refuge. Otherwise, just being in the robes of an ordained person does not qualify you to be a Sangha object of refuge. But,、um, but, uh, on the other hand, then, if you have in,、uh, four individuals who, are,、um, who have、uh, maintained purely the, the vows, the novice, and fully ordained,、uh, Uh, fully ordained vows of, of a monk and nun, like that, you know,、uh, who have the, who have the bl-、uh, blessings of such a lineage and, <clears throat> and who have maintained, who, who have the blessings of the guru, or who have the blessings of the guru in, in maintaining such,、uh, such pure vows,、uh, the company of such four individuals, that can also, if you have su- such four in the gathering of such four individuals blessed with these vows in a pure form, then that o- Can also、uh, qualify as,、um, as being a, a Sangha object of refuge for,、um, for individuals together. So,、uh, otherwise, then,、uh, regardless of whether you are a male or a female, as long as you have the direct realization of emptiness, then that individual,、uh, regardless of being a male or a female, Odin or non Odin, then is qualified as a, a Sangha object of refuge. That's all that. サンジンチューダ、ソジチューンナー、アネ、グンジョスイダー、デネ、チャンジュセンバ、タ、ハンダー、コリオンスゾー、ナー、アネ、チャンジュパトダネ、ジャスチェス、デネ、アー、ソソギ、カンテシキンボ、セミ、ジャンジンディ、モンド、マンジュルバト、アネ、マトゥル、セミ、デ、アネ、モンド、ジョスワイナ、ザチムチャスワイナ、アネ、チャンジュクセナ、タスゾー、ジャサチロラヨマレ、チャンチュクパトタネジャプチェ、サンマチパトスラン。ガヤンサンマチパト、チャランラ、ジャプスドレイ。ジャプスドレイアデイヤン。アニチャンチュキセンダ、トニタワ、ザチンボチラン。ガギ、ディンガランウンドマンジュバダ、ネチャランラ、ジャプスドレイ。セグリ。アニガザマインバ、アニ、ニチャプスドランディアン、タイビスンジェ、ガダ、ガンダバセンジェ、ソロバデバヨバ。デワラ、ガジンジオ、アツオバ、ドニヨバ、ドニラ、マガニ、セムジェ、タムジェド、アニ、ソバ、デワン、バジギ、チェドラ、アニニシ、チンバト、チュルムダ、ザバラ、ソバ、アニ、チランナジ、マチェタバシュ、チギン、セグ。So, so I take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, in, and the Bodhisattvas, and all the entourage, until enlightened, until, until, Until attaining enlightenment. So, until, until I, until I attain the state, awakened state of enlightenment, until I actualize,、um, the ultimate nature of my mind,、uh, until I, you know, until the day I have actualized this unmistaken awakened state of enlightenment, until then, then I take refuge in the Buddha Dharma and Sangha until the,、um, until, and the reason,、uh, You know, the, until these, until the, this kind of pure view and bodhicitta, until all of this is, is brought manifest within my mind stream, until it is awakened within my mind, until then I take refuge、um, 
in the Buddha Dharma and Sangha, and that not just uh, not just for oneself, but for the uh, for the sake of all sentient beings who do not want suffering and who who seek happiness, you know, seek happiness, and in in, in order to actualize this this kind of purely state of enlightenment for the be- uh, benefit of all sentient beings, that that I am going to engage in the practices of generosity. Ethics, uh, you know, uh, tolerance, perseverance, and so forth. Lazo din chena matang ma chingdiri aningi chezo jue din de zin din de chen bitu ne sanji chezo ma tarsum yam to tungos. So you you be, you already know what refuge is all about, and, and this is my way of reminding you. So keeping this in mind, then we'll we'll do the pr- refuge prayer. Sanjin <laughs> Chan <laughs> So, what is uh, taught in the Dharma as a key point is to not to commit any non virtue in life. Mm-hmm. So the entire Dharma has to do with your mind. So this, so there is this very precious teaching, to not to commit any non-virtue, and to you know, um, to accumulate bountiful virtuous actions, and to subdue the mind, to discipline the mind. For this is the teachings of the Buddha. So, so every day, you know, what we experience in life is the, you know, the want for happiness, not wanting, not wanting any kind of suffering. So that is there in our daily life. Chazan, tungi girek tizite tikpa layatiye angaso sora tungi ziyung tehure. All us feelings of suffering and pain, it comes from non from our non virtuous activities. So in order to eradicate that, so, so to eradicate that, then you have to engage in virtue. So, uh, virtue is the basis for your happiness. Is what generates happiness. Hmm. That. Any rangi simni yonsundus. 
is, and then you have uh, the line saying, completely subdue your mind. For, for that is the teachings of the Buddha. So if we ask, what is that? So first we need to recognize, identify what is non-virtue. Mm. In our life, we engage in so many activities. Mm. We, we have to support our family. Need to study. So we have so many activities that we have to engage in. So for all of this, what is our way of thinking with regard with regards to all these activities? Uh, you know, only for it's for to to secure our happiness. Mm. All the physical work that we do. Uh, all the verbal verbal activities we engage in. And all the mental engagement, all the mental activities that we engage in. So, so the, so the, it's all these activities are based in our, in the activities of our body, speech, and mind. So, so the change that has to be engaged in, brought into, is, is with regards to the body, speech, and mind, activities of the body, speech, and mind. So how to make that change? <laughs> what we normally use, we have some uh, wisdom. We, you know, we have that kind of knowledge of some wisdom. But uh, this wisdom is not a perfect wisdom, not a perfect wisdom. It's a, it's a wisdom that is kind of <clears throat> uh, conjoined with delusional thoughts. So, uh, um, we, uh, you know, together with this kind of wisdom, we have these afflicted delusional thoughts of, uh, you know, attachment, anger, ill will, you know, uh, uh, pride, jealousy, so forth. We have all all these kind of uh, afflicted ways of thinking that uh, that we are so habituated to. So, you know, these, these, these afflictions, nobody has taught us how to generate it. You know, the, the Buddha Dharma, you know, the, our objects of refuge didn't teach us. Uh, our parents didn't teach this. But, you know, yet we have the instincts for all of this because of our habit. Habit, the habit that we have um, had with us, not in terms of just this lifetime, but since beginning lifetimes, we've had this habit with these kind of afflicted ways of thinking. So you see, you don't need to make any effort, but yet when we encounter certain conditions, these afflicted ways of, uh, of uh, thinking arise in us so instinctively, so intuitively because of the habit. Mm. So now we have to think, uh, you know, how, how is my way of thinking? So, 
So when when these th- afflictions of anger and attachment rise in us, the usually uh, the usual reason is you know this person harm this person harmed me, I'm so good that one's so bad you know so so you know we 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 create these reasons for generating these uh, thoughts of uh, aggression. So. When the way we blame everything on others, it's not it's not like that at all. But because everything arises due to dependent or due to dependence, there is a connection. So because of this, we, because of this, we have the feelings of unhappiness. So in order to you know, extinguish this, we need to open up an extraordinary kind of wisdom. This wisdom is in us. Mm. So, uh, you know, just as how our mind is, how our mind is apprehending, holding, grasping, that the way in which um, our mind is, whether be it through uh, thoughts of attachment or, or anger, the way our mind is grasping and holding on to it doesn't exist like that and the, and then on the other hand when we are in a very depressed state of mind you know completely l- lacking confidence in a totally depressed uh, state of mind then the way this mind is also holding on to to that kind of low self is a state of depression the way it's holding on to or grasping on to it it's not like that also and just as how uh, one holds on to oneself as so precious, so uh, important or so precious, it isn't like that at all, the way one is beholding oneself. So when we talk about training the mind or subduing the mind, then we then that mind is able to see that reality. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, because of our afflictions, then we have all these elaborations of our mind outside. So, who, who, is, that, who is that person and mm-hmm. that is, you know, creating all these elaborations of the mind? Mm-hmm. So, all, all this is, is in the nature of dependent arising. Nothing is permanent. Mm-hmm. If it is dependently uh, related arisings, then it is subject to change. Uh, you know, it, uh, it is subject to, it will not stay like that. So um, even this body, you know, uh, you know, you take care of its uh, well-being, make, ensure it's he- healthy, but there is nothing to hold it so sacred and important. But you cannot say uh, it's not uh, it's not good. This body is not good. You cannot say that also. If you, especially when you think in the context of dependent rising, it is in the nature of being empty. Mm. 
Meba chavi rang yi zina, rang yi chakpa da jemba shukchimbu chena, rang nandru jeda mare. So you see, if, if this body is in the nature of, uh, if this body is, is by nature empty, thereby, thereby transient and subject to change, so, uh, you know, for oneself to hold on to this body as something so precious and important, then is, isn't there a mistake already in that view of thinking? Nevertheless, this, this, this body still needs to be taken care of uh, to you know, ensure its health. Although it is in the nature of being in, being in the nature of suffering, being in the nature of uh, being transient, impermanent. Because this is still an extraordinary basis on the uh, basis, um, uh, extraordinary basis on the, uh, on, uh, through which we can secure a uh, peerless happiness and totally extinguish suffering. Mm. On, on the basis of this body, then we have the body, speech, and mind associated with this body with which we can engage in so many activities. So, uh, so in order to extinguish suffering, then it is very important to engage wisdom, or engage our wisdom. In our mind, we have a lot of fear. We have a lot of problems and difficulties. Why? It's all because of our grasping. Our mind of grasping, the way it is grasping onto, onto life, or onto entities, is not from the view of dependent arising. But it's grasping on to things as, as if it is solid, concrete, permanent. Our grasping, we need the most beautiful, the most reputable. We need everything, whatever is the best in the world. That is the desire of our grasping. And it is the uh, what is the activity of this mind of grasping? It's only for yourself alone. It, it, you know, with this kind of mind of grasping, it's it's on the verge of anger, verge of attachment, verge of jealousy, like that. It's a very, very limited state of mind. Very constricted. Uh, on, on the basis of a very small reasoning, you create a bonfire. Uh, such, such strong jealousy. You know, it kind of uh, make it difficult for your family or the people around you. Uh, within your, uh, if you have children, then creating difficulties. Uh, within uh, within your relationships, uh, within your workplace, so, so all all this happens due to this very strong mode of grasping, uh, mind of grasping. So uh, this this sentient being's mode of grasping is not honest. It's not truthful. And it's objective, it's very, very sort of pitiful. Only your own purpose. Your family. One's own happiness and well-being. Everything is focusing on that alone. One's family, one's own happiness and well-being. 
digi semba digi with this kind of mentality this semba pusitobo it's a very kind of limited constricted way of thinking to sandra semewa kind of uh, cannot bear to stand even the slightest of things ani tosala trado if someone is a little better off then you have extreme jealousy ani dranyam na desem and if someone is equal to you then you have such strong thoughts of competitiveness ani mala tipse and if someone is less lesser than you then you have uh, you know you disparage them ani dindi shi tsoa ji go ren ngaso so that is the kind of the feeling that it generates a zangbo yakbo che temba yina and even on the occasion when thoughts of virtue some to do something good comes about to lon ra man ra ji ka wear some different types of clothing and don la urti je ta chen ra man ra chu ya ti ta ta la ra man ra ji che you know pull your faces left and right and paint it all up ta ti ze ya lo pa lo ji and you know stretch your hair hair up and down These are all the ways we we try to secure our happiness. Yet that yet that happiness is so minute, so minuscule. Puk dem bo mido. There's nothing and there's no future in that happiness. Mita virung jila because it is in the nature of impermanence. Tak pa jine but our mind holds on to this impermanent feature as being permanent chadang ilo jegiri and have such thoughts of uh, obsession aggression mizang birangila something that is totally impure chang manjini chadang ilo jegiri is is we hold it as something perfect and pure mm tungi birangila something that which in reality is suffering dewanjini chadang jegiri we hold on to as happiness and you know be obsessed about it thi changmalo all of this ta mebala ta kunjini you know in that which is in in fact self uh, selfless in nature then holding on to it as, mm. as being self existent on dire ta di long in this chigore so these are the mistaken states of mind sim tu gona and di lo ti ti le ka kharchi lo ti ha ko ro a so uh, when we talk about training the mind or subduing the mind discipline the mind then this is where one needs to know ta shirap khasena so as we open our mind to wisdom da chala jen ta you should see the faults in our mind uh, in in our in in our minds of obsession of attachment she dan la jeun da see the faults of uh, anger and aggression tha do la jeun da see the faults in jeal- jealousy then sim changbo uh, and if you have, and and sim. if and if you have an honest truthful state of mind seeing the virtue in that sim changbo se na kare so what is an honest mind what is a truthful mind tatela tu se tu jo shrayo rakpa itone changbo trave itone changbo so to simla khale beji eh mesi nanga na ji cha chimbo ji ewa che ye je thara mambo yere so when we talk about a, an honest mind a truthful mind that has many different levels from the gross to the most subtle and in the, the its levels can be as as expansive as space itself can you seba chimbo then we talk about great tolerance great patience ningje chimbo great compassion saksam chimbo great extraordinary altruism sonju chimbo great perseverance di yunya la for all this to uh, be generated in our mind yangja shirap chimbo je kase ore we need to generate even greater wisdom karisena korba la yadi what's the jumbling la yadi why is that is because when we talk about samsara cyclic existence chine chin chite tinjung irajire nang chu chi semje tinjung irajire this uh, you know the this habitat of cyclic existence it it is uh, it is in the nature of dependent arising and its habitants the sentient beings they are also in the nature of uh, dependent arising ngaso demba tepa tewa chibu jige 
So when we talk about dharma or when we talk about you know cyclic existence, they are all dependent arising, you know, that uh, relying on some other uh, that which relies or depends on an, an, another. Hmm. Ta simdi jachimbu samantanguri. So therefore. I, our mind should have a very broad, expansive way of thinking. So, uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, when we talk about phenomena in general, then it is all dependent. It has to depend on something. It has to encounter something. And by this mode, they arise. By this mode, uh, they cease. By this mode, they exist. So, without dependence, uh, without encountering, without depend, uh, d- depending, nothing is possible. Mm. So this way, when we utilize our wisdom in this kind of broad, expansive way, then, uh, you know, this is what entails, you know, utilizing this wisdom. Uh, you, you, the, by utilizing this kind of wisdom, you take responsibility. So, the way to take responsibility is through the sphere of dependent rising. So, when we take this kind of responsibility uh, on the basis of, on, you know, on the basis of dependent rising, then we have a very broad, expansive outlook in life. Oh, one kind of realizes that just seeking one's own individual benefit, one sees there's not much point to it at all. One takes responsibility for the entire family. Uh, take responsibility for the entire neighborhood. Take responsibility for the entire country. Oh, Zambling. I should take responsibility for the entire world. This entire world system is my family. And all the beings that exist in this world uh, are all my uh, relatives. What is the reason for that way of thinking? So, um, why is it, uh, why should I think like that? It's because everything that I have that sustains me in the way of my food, my clothing, my shelter, everything, it all comes from them. So, but on the other hand, what mm. is the mode of thinking of my grasping mind? I don't need to depend on anybody. Uh, I'm very wealthy by myself. Uh, I study on my own. My money is my own. My work is my own. Uh, it's everything is to do with myself. I don't need to de- uh, depend on anybody. So this mode of this mode of grasping, this mode of grasping is completely uh, false. It's a completely mistaken, false way of thinking them. What is the reason for that? My body. It comes from, my, from this body of mine comes from the sperm and the egg of my father and mother. Mm. It's dependent on that. 
So in my in my infancy, then my parents nurtured me. And all my study and learning and training was endowed by my teachers. So and whatever uh, comforts and conditions one has, it all comes in dependence upon others. Ah, So therefore, others have to be very precious. And these others have a lot of difficulty. And, and, the, and the difficulties that the others have also are created by the same Uh, attachment, anger, ignorance, and so forth. Just as it is creating for me, it is creating the same thing for the others as well. Mm. The, when I talk about, uh, when I identify, identify somebody as an enemy, there is no solid, concrete black enemy. It, it is mind which has cre- created or projected this person as an enemy. So, and when, my, uh, when I hold someone as dear and precious, then also it isn't quite that, you know, it is my afflicted mind that has created that. So, in this way, when we utilize our wisdom, Open chair, All this uh, my constricted mind that we have uh, is opened up. So when we talk about uh, emptiness, the uh, most important feature of this wisdom realized emptiness is, is, is that it extinguishes uh, attachment and anger and so forth, these afflictions. So this, uh, this affliction of attachment and anger is what destroys the world, is what destroys the, uh, the uh, society, you know, it uh, is what destroys all uh, one's, own in, uh, one's own well-being and happiness. So, when, so in this context, it becomes extremely important for us to know what emptiness is. It doesn't matter whether you accept dharma or not, a spiritual path or not. Because emptiness is something really very beneficial to an individual. So, when you have this kind of understanding of what emptiness is about, then there is great aspiration, uh, aspiration to uh, cultivating bodhicitta, you know, the altruistic mind of bodhicitta. You know, one has great aspiration to sort of generate that mind as well. Mm. The bodhicitta that we normally talk about is, is our hope, is our wish. It's something we are happy about. That, it's so great if I had it, that's all we think. And we pray, may it happen, may it happen, may it happen. But for it to happen, We have to get rid of all that grasping and come onto the path of reality. Then that goodness can come about. And when goodness come, comes about, then perfect power and potential comes about. And that way, then one can actualize that forever Peerless happiness. So, so when we talk about, you know, that you have to meditate, 
it, generally in this world now today everyone wants to meditate komlana komji deyanjire so when when we take the word meditation in tibetan is gom gom means habituating the mind familiarizing the mind ta komi rikta mana yore so there are many different kinds of meditations nikap nikap ji nyumutes mango noya sam nikap nikap ji nyumutes pa tes and da <laughs> some uh, some meditations uh, temporarily kind of give you relief from our afflictions ah gina ya nga to kom ki chi shu de je wo re but we should seek the most important meditation nga to ta na kom je ai nun ba yore because we have the potential for such meditation nga to ji wan bu ji because we have nyam yo ma re we have the perfect faculties you know of uh, we have such sound faculties to engage in such uh meditation mm gom je du ma so dang jin la ne ya rang jin jin la ne ya di gom de cha ba yin na so when we meditate if we do the meditation that kind of that is an antidote to the ego grasping mind to the self cherishing mind any dig in jibute tarwata The result of such meditations then uh, result in liberation and the perfect complete state of enlightenment. Ngacho ta tarwa la ditenala simkin zimba kingwa yonsto ba tarzona simnonjuje lo yonsto ba meba chazona ane shira pudu chunwa manoren nonju chune meba simdure di ngola ya so near near jona yani sangri kari sangri yani nyumola sang yenden de ji so when when we talk, when we talk of you know actualizing the result of uh, of liberation then what it is that we are liberated liberated from we are liberated from all the afflicted afflicted delusional uh mistaken states of mind totally liberated from all of that and what our mind has awakened into is into the awakened into a, into the state of a perfect complete uh, wisdom and knowledge mm ta kom mo bo ji ma so jimba ne ga ma re many many there are many kinds of meditations that that does not sort of that does not act as an antidote or harm a grasping mind in any way ani jimba tang rang jin jin tang tang jin la mane na if if those meditations if it does not harm our ego grasping mind if it does not act as an antidote to our self cherishing mind then ngaz sem tu mare then there's no way to subdue or discipline this mind sem matina if we don't discipline or subdue this mind kangi tilu shira pejo dang shi mare there's only uh, problems and difficulties and we are unable to utilize our wisdom mm ta ina yang kom damara ge chembore nevertheless these engaging in these different kinds of meditations is important ne so pugre nesu skale kadorwa because uh, <laughs> uh, it brings some sort of relaxation <laughs> and it the same hello yungriwa and when when our mind is relaxed mm nam to te se nyungru our kind of superstitious mind kind mm. of subsides mm ta yakwata re de it is good ina yang na so kom jep la du katina pichu yewa But, but uh, we should engage in a, a meditation that uh, helps us uh, that you know that is of use to us uh, at all times a meditation that is useful to us for all times first is to engage in analytical meditation and the uh, the the more we engage in al- analytical meditation the greater and greater our wisdom mind of wisdom uh, becomes so so jumje thoni theba jumje thoni yichi gure because through analytical meditation we see the reasonings that bring forth the 
the faith uh, through, uh, uh, through reasoning that we are able to see the um, uh, uh, you know that we are able to trust mm. and have faith. Kalarajina he mewa kalazana matui zubula derang yungrawa. For example, when we eat something which is um, which is uh, you know not to- toxic, if we eat a very healthy food, then uh, you know it's very health good for us. Hmm. Kala zayjong mambo damne zawa ina nika kala jimbo ina ina zubutama chola drogdoa. But if we eat a food that had uh, that has lot of things added. Uh, you know, and but only you know ensures a good taste, but doesn't you know it, 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 temporarily it feels really good eating it, but in the long run, bec- because of so many things added, flavors added to it, in the long run it, it's it's of no good to us. So therefore, when we meditate, also. You know, when we med- when we familiarize our mind with anything, it is it is we should familiarize it. We should habituate our mind to something that which is unmistaken. Any picture, kawala ina yore. When it is unmistaken familiarity, then it is of use everywhere. Chote shi ni tebatona. If if you if you have faith in the Dharma through understanding. Chesa chule tare. When we, talk, when we talk about Dharma, which is the uh, the nature of emptiness, bodhicitta. Ani di ji sokpa chita bazi ye chu kesha mare. So uh, this is uh, but these concepts of bodhicitta emptiness is uh, you know is not about one particular group. Ato sama la kogre. You know, is, is, you know, a view of emptiness bodhicitta is something that is necess- necessary for everyone. Everyone who wants happiness do not want suffering. It is, it is of need for them. <laughs> so, uh, f- uh, for something very important, uh, emptiness is it's not emptiness is not something new. It is our reality. Zu Dra uh, form, Ti. sound, smell, Ro. taste, uh, you know, uh, contact or tactile sensations. All of them Nangi Sim our inner mind. Uh, yu. Outer, outer objects, uh, subject, inner subject. Uh, its nature is like, you know, find its nature. Find the nature of all of these things. See the actual nature of all these things. Look into the, uh, look into the nature of all of these things. Do not look at the falseness, but look at the reality of all of these things. So isn't it a joke to say that I don't want to see this reality? <laughs> so therefore, it's very important. So when we talk of emptiness, it's, it's not like the empty space. It's not the empty space between us. It's not that. Uh, we are talking about, uh, you know, the 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 grasping towards the objects of our obsession and aggression. That which creates all the suffering in our life. The subject and object. Oh, we are, we are seeing, uh, we, we say that the nature of all of this is empty. When we say it is empty, we are not sort of negating conventional reality. Because it is empty, because it is empty, everything exists. 
if there is no emptiness na so karsin geger karsin nager then jivan roshing marwa there is not possible uh, you know it's not possible for change uh, why are we happy why are we sick you know all of this would not be possible if it were if it weren't if if the if its reality was not emptiness tong ba ni injang ma so sang jia yu de because there is emptiness we we have the potential for enlightenment tong ba ni injang ma so ni wa jia do because because it is emptiness we can also be reborn in the hells di kare why is that ko sung di because our body speech and mind di pa jia na when milena solely engages in negativity and non virtue ti jibu da sorba dunge its result is only suffering mm semba zangbo da changbo pen tona ti ye sorba dewa yu dewa but when we generate this kind of altruistic goodness of the mind and and a virtue in life then its result is only happiness pa to gi saben tona So when you plant a poisonous seed, you know you cannot uh, expect to be a medicinal plant. So when you plant a poisonous seed, you know you cannot expect a medicinal plant to grow. So when you plant a poisonous seed, you know you cannot expect a medicinal plant to grow. So when you plant a poisonous seed, you know you cannot expect a medicinal plant to grow. So when you plant a poisonous seed, you know you cannot expect a medicinal plant to grow. So when you plant a poisonous seed, you know you cannot expect a medicinal plant to grow. So when you plant a poisonous seed, you know you cannot expect a medicinal plant to grow. So when you plant a poisonous seed, you know you cannot expect a medicinal plant to grow. So when you plant a poisonous seed, you know you cannot expect a medicinal plant to grow. So when you plant a poisonous seed, you know you cannot expect a medicinal plant to grow. So when you plant a then it has to be uh, dependent on its same contingent conditions tini chambata jebi lo so it is such a thing so so uh, based on this then uh, you know aspirations of loving kindness compassion are so very precious ani tongi she jane chadang shira yo mare when uh, when we have the understanding of emptiness then we find release from obsessive minds of aggression and attachment then akbar to la seva shukshim bole gire and this this more sense of loving kindness and compassion se roa chik mai ba na so mi roa roa then thundo in roa thongi do roa ri chuk na so ba chi ye ani ni su thong du an ni ji ji gire you know we are able to not just see the human b- world but the world systems of animals all the myriad forms of existence and uh, in toward all one is able to generate a sense of compassion ki chamalo rang ni sim rang yung de ha ma ho ji sim tribeting ni cha da yang ang ni phang ji ji ki thong ni du ani mo ni ning ji re so uh, you know when we Yeah, uh, from a mistaken state of mind, from a mistaken state of mind, when we when we have this kind of outlook, then one. Ninja chigiri, simji pangri thona ma pangri devut min tejote thona. So, um, so you know when we see so, so, when we have this kind of comprehension of seeing how sentient beings are experiencing the results of their karmic actions then you know it with that kind of knowledge then one is able to have greater compassion for them kangdar nimba power go lai do a chanan so be misi kom jana nga power che shi ko ane nga be misi ke che bunga power che bu ko lai do power ko na tuni chanju ki semla jane jina power di che se yo mare so you know often people want to meditate so that one is totally empowered you know we have such aspiration to have great power within ourselves but the the greatest uh, the best power is in one's cultivation of the wisdom realize emptiness and bodhicitta the power that is generated out of these two resources is the very best of the powers ngaso sa komianda ngadanya gawo yerwa so we love meditating on deities we love reciting mantras ngai joshanala chanju gisem da toni joshare so yet the subject core subject matter of mantra and meditation on deities is actually bodhicitta and emptiness sa tiso toni ninje 
Zungdu jubi rangnang le shat de vazir wa. The deity that one meditates on is actually the unification of the mind of bodhicitta and emptiness appearing as the deity. Tindi ti gong ma shi wa yi na? So if you don't know how to meditate that, what deity are you going to be meditating on? <laughs> what, uh, uh, what mantra are you going to recite that generous benefit? <laughs> so, you know, if you think, you know, I med- I'm going to meditate on this deity and I, I want compassion, I want wi- wisdom, and with that thought you can recite away tons of mantras, then what are you, uh, you know, you know, what are you going to get out of that? <laughs> so, if you have the understanding of the importance of the actual practice, then there is great benefit Otherwise, it's just like an animal. Then uh, you know. Uh, then, without these kind of re- uh, understanding, without these kind of understanding, then, then you, it, it, you know, there is no result that comes from these practices, and then you come to conclude there is no sort of benefit from these practices. So therefore. To have that kind of faith and belief through understanding is so very important. So, uh, you know, to have uh, to have the faith, to have the pure view, uh, you know, the uh, the clear. Uh, the clean, clear faith, belief uh, in the pure appearance, then uh, to have that ca- all the conditions of the dependent arising, these are all very important features. Oh, so it's, it's like this. To, when we talk about subduing the mind, you need to have many causative conditions together to subdue the mind. And so in life, or whatever it is that we um, entrust ourselves and in, in belief in, that we entrust, that we take refuge in, uh, hold as a, uh, something that endows us with, mm. or, with only happiness. Di, ani chanju kisem tuni ninji zunju lehde ta ta cheshu. So uh, it is basically the unification of the pure view of emptiness and bodhicitta. The, uni- the unification of this is the most important and the most uh, precious, the most beautiful thing in one life in one's life. If you can generate these. This within one's mind, slowly, slowly nurture it within your mind. So, so your mind can experience only happiness. This is not possible for there to be suffering. Not only, not only does one experience happiness, but one is able to generate happiness for others in one's life. And so in, in, in terms of time, then it is not limited. It's limitless. Every, everything in life, like whether it is a, a, a human rebirth, a material resources, all these are limited, has limitations. Our, our family, our reputation, there are, there are limitations to them. They are good, they are precious. But eventually, they are all subject to the nature of change. They are all transient. And basically, in the nature of suffering. So it's, it's not something that one can entrust oneself. So you have to know... Uh, 
uh, what is important and uh, what is good for the ultimately one what is good and also what is good ultimately lasso <laughs> so that's it ni tamshi jutsu bai chirotsu iji jiwayu na kashizuku ashari ni so i've i've told you what i wanted to say now if you have any questions you can ask if i don't allow you to ask, ask some questions i think i'm going to burn up your ears moro do wa cha cha shigatsu do chi shijimasu de yo you might think i'm 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 having only my own way and not allowing the way for others <laughs> go ahead just ask anyone just go ahead uh hello thank you for yeah. uh, coming pivot to chenas um in your uh speech you talked about the practice uh, i suppose you're talking about chamata so my question is what are the methods for increasing the stability and the clarity of the meditation and how to increase one without reducing the other say that again uh, stability stability and, and clarity clarity uh uh in your meditation uh sim to gong jeop to ka sim tempo ta sebu yo ya chet ti sim de tempo ta sebu yo ya ti ya ke ta ya chet ka chi kure es oh di sira peju tang la ya dire so that comes down to utilizing your wisdom gom la an pa ju chi ni ni yo ri ji wa da go ba the the main obstacles to meditation is uh, um you know mental distraction and mental dullness you know sluggish states of minds tini a chi wa yong gi ndeum ndeu su su che ba shi ra pe ju dang ne shi ra zur ne an shi ra bi che ba che ne o chi wa a yang ke ba shu ne zam ling chu do che nang de le de yo wai na chang ga ne de wai na yang sem de So uh, when we are meditating uh, part of your wisdom stands stands god to make sure mind is not distracted or that the mind doesn't slip into uh, uh, dullness or sluggishness so like you can be in your meditation room yet your mind can be sort of involved with all the world systems you know so so yet Uh, to so part of the mind has to stand guard to catch whenever you your mind is away from that focus or you know losing that hold oh keba tros keba lapsan si so 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 therefore that wisdom has to catch that mind the moment it sees it strain yang sem chu du jana chiwa yongri So again when is when the mind is too focused sometimes then it it goes into dullness and chuwa de tara mabuyeri so there are many different levels to that uh, dullness of the mind oh chuwa de sha chuwa chuwa sel ta be la shirap khase dang mabuyeri so 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 for all of these uh, states of uh, for all of these states of mind then there are different wisdoms to engage to counteract it. So 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 miss so so la come manda here come do manda here. All individuals we have different mental dispositions. Tesa la men shi lo ma de nyam nyong to ne ti ya de pe ke shimbo re. So therefore sometimes uh, it is important that the that the teacher the guru give specific instructions to the specific needs of the disciple. Mm. She need the halwa kishi mure. So uh, you know this calm abide abiding shamata is very very important. She la ne pe she ne lam trucks chabe she ne da wo singe namju tanye tirisi pe ju dange. Mm. So uh, 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 I describe it as a you know that which abides on the basis kam abiding mm shilane pe shinesena tongni ninjeng ani shatdewagi ani girim goyungdu shine loks gongumare so um when i when i talk about when i talk about um uh 
calm abiding that which abides on the on the basis is uh, I refer to as you know when we meditate on the deity uh, which is in the nature of the unification of the uh, you know tr- um, the the view of emptiness and bodhicitta which appears as the deity then uh, when we stay when uh, when we when we stay in focus on such a deity then we don't need to engage in, in on a, on a separate shamatha meditation while doing this uh, deity meditation then we can use that as the as the object of one's shamatha meditation lam thoks cha bi sini thela dini ji sa lung la so pate changma lo ani ji So there are many ways of instructing on shamatha or calm abiding, uh, utilizing uh, uh, the uh, path as a support by utilizing the channels, winds, and the drops of the body. Uh, on the basis of that, then again, uh, you know, giving specific intra- instructions to the disciple. And of course, uh, the basic uh, meditation posture, which is the seven point uh, mm. of uh, Beresana's mm. meditation posture, to to sustain that physical posture is also very important. Mm. So, so you have the um, the points of the channels uh, of the body, the points of the channels of the speech, the points of the channels of the mind. Then, again, those are very specific in- instructions. Um, you know, depending on the disciples. But the most important um, method is to have the. Perseverance to pursue it. Ani le tangbo wala tu ringju mamare. And uh, uh, when we first engage in meditation, we shouldn't do long sessions. Short. Tu chung sa chung sa chung sa sina. Many many ani, short sessions. Ani simde ani tu du wala chaje mambo yere. So when we do consecutive many short sessions, then we can slowly join it up. Naso. That's it. That's it. Do you do it? Okay. Once again, Tashi Dele to everybody. Ani Ani Dila so So, so whatever I've spoken, I've done so with a very pure motivation, uh, as I don't have much. And Kando um, invited me to come here, and in this very precious monastery, uh, uh, you know, especially um, uh, with precious Lama Zubrimchi, with precious Abbot, you know, uh, for us to have this precious opportunity to have a discussion on on bodhicitta and pure view is. Uh, is very fortunate uh, encounter and so on my part also with my with, with the best of my motivation I, I have offered the session mm then a kushu roja da kushu kona ba ani ani namba and ani kandu tsube ani kon sam ani che tsube samalo la ani e kon da jung che na ba du lo ni che che do che na go tsawar zu du Uh, can, uh, uh, so, um, to, to, so um, 
uh, I apologize having to talk about the Dharma in front of the Sangha like Roger, Kando, and all the Sangha here for, <laughs> for me to be talking about Dharma. And if there has mm-hmm. been any shortcomings, I apologize for that. Uh, and thank you very much to everyone who, 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 uh, who, uh, who, initi- uh, who took the initiative for this session. <laughs> Thank you to the translator. That's <laughs> all. Okay. okay. And see you soon. <laughs>